This is the area where those artisans, the people, the technicians, the artisans who made knives and swords going way, way back hundreds of years are still doing it in much the same way it was done back then. Hey everyone, Steve with Steve's POV here. We're in a part of GIF that is called Seki. Seki is a famous city known for cutlery and its long, long history from katanas and swords into modern day cutlery. And we are here at one of the best companies, Centiary, doing this type of business for over a hundred years. That is the Seki Kanetsugu Cutlery Company right here in Seki. And I want to introduce you to the president. He's the third generation and his name is Mr. Kawamura. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. I meet you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. The process starts with something that looks like this. Look at the thickness of this metal. It's very rough. It's very raw, it's very unfinished, it's very thick. It's 1.3, 1.4 millimeters in thickness. But when the production process starts here, this is where the metal gets smoothed down and shaped. They have to run the knives through each one of these machines two times to get that thickness down. It means that they take this and they actually bevel these, the knives down like a katana was in the old days, which is all part of that history and this company has been doing this for over a hundred years unbelievable to still see it being made and how what a human intensive process it is to make things like this let's check out more of what's going on here you can see even though the machines are cutting and shaving down a lot of these a lot of the cutlery you can see he's, he's checking everything by eye the width the cut everything else to make sure that it's absolutely perfect before it moves on to the other part of the assembly process this is his model. You can see here the thickness that we had in the beginning, now down to just a fraction of millimeters in, in size. You can also see the bevel, the size, the way this is. It goes from thick to thin, curves down like this. Every cut must be perfect. If it fails here at this point, everything fails going down the line. So this is a very, very first important step in the production process taking place right here. Once those, the cutlery has come off of those machines, they come here for now a series of different sanding and grinding and different polishing techniques that are taking place on these machines. You can see here, they're working on a variety of different items at one time. This is a, they have a number of different types of, of products that they produce here, but you can see they all go through the same thing. They're, he's beveling down the edges now, the hard edges, the rough edges on the outside, creating that form on the end to absolute perfection. It looks like he has about seven, eight, maybe ten knives in his hand at one time. He's putting in here, evening them up, and then smoothing down the ends like this. That curve on the end, so it's perfectly smooth. Amazing, all done by hand. Sits here all day long, all these people doing this. It's, it's unbelievable, the attention to detail. Again, this is Japan, there's history. These are people who dedicated their lives to doing this. This factory is interesting, because a lot of places that we've seen in Japan have a lot of very older people doing the work. Once these older people, they pass away or they retire, that there will be no more younger people to kind of do this work here in Japan any further. Not here. You can see, this guy's not that old, but he's mastering this, this technique, he's mastering his craft so that the next generation can continue for another hundred years of making cutlery here like Kanetsugu does here in Seki. And look, people are so serious about their work. They're so focused on it. This is what they do. Just like all these other people do. They each have a specialty, and that's what they focus on doing. Once that's done, we head over here to the quality control. Here is where it's all inspected before it ships out. Checking by eye, conforming everything. That's what she's doing here, both sides. Everything is then polished up, cleaned up before it's packaged 
and shipped out. Again, you can see how many people and how many steps are involved in making something that, again, we take for granted. You take a knife out of a drawer, we say we just start cutting it. We never stop and think what's involved in the process. It's so labor intensive, it's so amazing to see. Think about the days of the katanas and swords and all feudal Japan. This is the area where those artisans, the people, the technicians, the artisans who made knives and swords going way, way back hundreds of years are still doing it in much the same way it was done back then. They took that, that knowledge, they took the ability to make things like swords and katanas and move them into everyday steak knives, everyday home cutlery and other things. If you want a knife, or you want some cutlery that lasts a lifetime, best to get quality to begin with. It's so amazing to see a company like Seki Kanetsugu Cutlery. Now to you, through Yagi Select, we have a collection. This is a 100 year anniversary edition to celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the Seki Kanetsugu Cutlery Company. Let me introduce you to some of the beautiful products that they're offering. First of all, in very Japanese form, you can see in beautiful wood boxes, we have this exclusive steak knife set called Nami. Nami, by the way, means waves. And this four color steak knife set, each one is colored with a different handle. In tradition, many times even chopsticks and other things were made different colors. Why? Dad had his own chopsticks, mom has her own chopsticks, everybody uses them. You can have your own steak knife. Dad, how's a red steak knife for you? Mom, dark, maybe brown, blue for your son, black, whatever you want to do. Doesn't matter, you can share the steak knives, but this gorgeous, gorgeous, high quality set of steak knives is available to you now. Here we also have a couple of other selections in this 100 year anniversary uh, edition. This is called the Zuyun. And what this product is, this is a bigger knife. The handle is so beautifully crafted. Just look at the patterns on the knife and how it is, it's, it's amazing. It comes in a wooden box and it comes with case as well with it. This is a long cutting knife. Perhaps you're cutting big meats, hams, and other things like that, or you're slicing sashimi off of a big piece of tuna. This is the piece that you want to have in your kitchen to do that with. If you're into decoration and more detailed type, type of things, you can check out this, the slightly smaller knife, and you can make little decor, very detailed carvings in little vegetables, maybe tomatoes and other stuff like that with the smaller, very detailed knife. These are all part of the same series. They're all available through Yagi Select on the website and they're all made right here in Japan by hand in the factory that you just saw from the third generation owner of this company and uh, it's amazing, it's amazing. You know, you can go and buy cheap cutlery anywhere. You can go and buy cheap knives. These are not cheap, but these will last a lifetime. I hope you can appreciate the beauty of made in Japan, of made in Gifu, of made in Seki Kanetsugu Cutlery Company here in Gifu, Japan. Check out Yagi Select for this 100 year anniversary collection of the most beautiful cutlery I've ever seen. Thumbs up.